In this video, we will learn how to create single page application using ASP.NET MVC. Now, before we dive into the programming world, let's understand what exactly mean by single page application. Now, single page application is nothing but it's simply a web application where application consists of only single page. It's, it looks very strange, right? Is it possible that entire application is having only one page? Now, programmatically, the answer for this question is no. But from an end user perspective, the answer is yes. In, in case of single page application, end user will get an impression that there is only one page. Everything will happen in a one page. There will not be any refresh involved. If user click on something, something will happen in the page, but there will not be any refresh. But in the background, when end user develops some such kind of application, what he do is he go and create multiple UIs. He go and create multiple code blocks and he will apply some logic and bring the appearance, appearance of single page application into the application and that is what we are going to learn here we will learn how to create it using asp.net mvc let's understand what we are going to create in this video we are going to create a simple uh, ui which is going to display a list of customers in a grid and there is going to be a small add new button when this add new button is clicked it will simply show up a new ui where there is going to be a add new button there is going to be a grid, but there is also going to be a list of, uh, sorry, there is also going to be a data entry screen where end user can put customer detail and click on save. When save button is clicked, again, we will come back to the previous first screen where now you can see the new record is added. Now the speciality about this complete UI is when you look at the UI, it looks like there was a single UI, right? So in let's understand how we can do such kind of application using ASP.NET MVC. So we have a simple MVC project created with us here. We have this controller, model and views folder. So let's start with creating model. I'll say right click, add new class. We call this class as customer, which will simply encapsulate our customer. And inside this class, let's create a couple of properties. I'll call it as property customer name prop string I'll call it as address and finally I'll say prop int h done yes now next step let's go and create a controller so I'll say right click this controller folder add new controller mvc5 controller empty add let's Put the put name as spa controller say add it will come up with uh, action method called as index let's keep it as it is and let's create a view right click this action method add view add done okay so now next we need to create a add button here so for that I'll put a simple input type equal to button name equal to BT and add new and value equal to add new what next next we have to display existing customers here so for that let's create view model view model is nothing but model specific to view everything which is required for this view is going to be the part of view model we want to display list of customers here so list of customer is going to be the part of that view model if you want to understand in detail what is view model then please go through view model video from our questpointvt.com so let's create view model for that let's create view model folder first so i'll say view model and then let's create a simple class inside it we will name this class as spa vm enter next let's create a simple property here i'll say property list of sorry list of customer customers definitely we need a namespace for in order to get these customers so i'll say using mvc web application one mvc web application one dot models done next let's go to our view and let's put a using block here using 
saying dot models and then let's make this view a strongly type view of type spa vm that is our view model so i'll say model spa vm sorry it's not model it's our view model correct yes now let's display list of existing customers in tabular manner here so for that we will use razor for loop so first we will put one more using statement here at the rate using web application one dot models and then we will write a simple table tag with and set border to one and then we will remove this td and we will put a th customer name one more th address and finally one more th and we will call it h and after that we will put a for loop here for each customer item in model which is our spa vm dot customers and we will create dynamically tr here td i'll say at the rate item dot customer name one more td and here i'll say at the rate item dot address one more td where we will display at the rate item dot h what next next we'll go to controller and pass spa vm as data to our view so let's create object of spa view model here spa view model v equal to new spa view model and then let's initialize the property customers with some function call now this is nothing but a simple function which is which we are going to write just below it now i already have that function ready with me so let me just copy it here as you can see inside this first uh, inside this uh, function I am creating a list of customers, and then one after uh, one after other, I am adding customer object inside this list of customer, and finally returning that list of customers. Now you may ask me a question that why this hard coding? Now see, basically in real time scenario, you may write some uh, entity framework code, or you may write some web service invoke call, whatever, and do it dynamically. But in this video, our more main motive is to create single page application. Okay, so let's concentrate there. So as you can see, we are done with everything. So it's time to execute it. Let's press F5, and in the URL, let's put spa slash index, which is nothing but URL of our action method, and let's see what we will get. So as you can see, there is an error. Why? Why is this error? Yeah, basically the reason for this error is, if you notice here, we are creating. spa view model but we are not passing it as data so we need to pass it and let me execute it it now and let me simply refresh it now and let's see whether we get output now or not yes the output is here we have all the customers in grid and we have add new button here target 1 achieved now target 2 will be displaying data entry screen here when this add button is clicked so for that we'll go back to our source code and create one more action method called data entry screen data entry screen and inside this action method instead of returning view we will return partial view next let's copy this data entry screen word and right click say add view data entry screen make sure to check this uh, option or check box create a partial view say add done now i'll simply fast forward my html creation and as you can see there is a form tag with uh, with action as save customer which will contain three text boxes customer name address and age also it has three buttons input type equal to submit with save input type equal to reset reset input type equal to button called cancel now when i click on this submit button it will simply make a request to post request to save customer action so let's create this save customer action next so let's go to our controller that is uh, spa controller 
and let's create a simple action method here I'll say public action result save customer and we'll simply take this customer argument here and then what I'll do is I'll simply write some code which will save this customer to database and finally I'll return the JSON representation of this saved of the same customer so I'll say return JSON C okay now next let's go to our index view that is this one and first let's add jQuery file here so for that we'll go to our script folder and we'll just drag this jQuery file here next we'll create one more script tag and we'll simply create a function that is add customer and we will invoke this add customer button add customer function when this add new button will be clicked so I'll say on click is equal to add customer in the next step we'll simply create a do tag just below this table tag and we'll assign a value to the ID property as do data entry as you can see this do is empty right now and next what we will do is in this add customer method we will make a call to this data entry action method and whatever it will return we will set it as inner HTML to this do so let's do that we'll simply use dollar dot get function for that which will uh, which will take action name as argument which is data entry screen and it will simply make call to our uh, data entry screen action method now the return type of this get function will is nothing but it's a promise object now in javascript promise object is a simple object which basically tells that in future it's going to give something to us for example this dollar dot get function will execute and when execution of this data entry screen action method completes it will give us something okay so if you simply say dot done to this action uh, to this promise object you need to pass a function argument which will get invoked when execution of data entry screen get completes so let me put it here I'll say R done now this R represents nothing but it's the output which is returned by this data entry screen action method so simply I'll put hash do screen which will return sorry not do screen do data entry it will simply return me this do element and I'll say dot HTML R now let's execute and let's confirm that it's actually working in the expected manner let's press F5 in the URL sparse slash index and so screen is here now click on let's click on add new button and let's see what happens so as you can see as soon as I click the add button without any refresh I got another action methods view just below the grid let me do it again I'll say refresh now I'll click on the add new button look at this icon add new there was no refresh and save customer is here sorry data entry screen is here now let me put some value here I'll say Sukesh I'll say Mumbai age is let's say 30 let me click on save now when I click on this save button basically this save customer action method will get invoked and it will simply return whatever customer uh, it will get as an uh, get because of model binder so let me click on save customer uh, let me put a breakpoint first and let me click on the save customer now as you can see the breakpoint is here if you check the C you will see that the values are there and now let me press F5 oh but what happened everything is gone right let me do it again I'll remove this breakpoint I'll go back now I'll click on the add new okay it's perfectly fine I'll put value here again Sukesh Mumbai and 30 and let me click on save now you will see that when I click on this save button some refresh was happened some actually complete page get posted and whatever response was returned it completely replaced the uh, earlier HTML right so we have to solve this problem so let's see how, how we can do that so in order to solve this problem we will change the save button click 
from normal button click or normal submit button click to ajax submit button click so for that we'll go to this data entry screen and we'll implement ajax here but this time what we will do is instead of using jquery pure ajax we will use mvc ajax please note that mvc ajax is nothing but it's again a wrapper over jquery ajax but it made many things more easier okay and once we are done with the, done with this practical we'll also discuss about uh, a small topic that is when to use mvc ajax and when to use jquery ajax so we'll start with uh, adding a necessary javascript file so let's go to index.html file and then we will use nuget package manager and download couple of javascript files so simply right click your project say manage nuget packages simply put ajax and this microsoft jquery unobtrusive ajax we need this one so simply click on install it will download whatever files are required for mvc ajax and then say close and you'll see that in the solution explorer inside script folder couple of new javascript files are added like jquery unobtrusive.ajax and min.js etc so simply drag this ajax.js here and then let's proceed further now let's go to data entry screen.chtml again and let's do the necessary changes here first we will write some razor code like this at the rate ajax options o is equal to new ajax options o dot on success is equal to on save su success we'll soon understand what is this what what is the meaning of this on save success and then we'll simply replace this form tag with a ajax helper function so we'll say add the rate using ht sorry ajax dot begin form and it will simply ask three options first action name which is nothing but save customer second controller name which is nothing but spa and third ajax options which is nothing but this o so simply let's put this o and then press enter and this slash form will be replaced with close tag of uh, this, uh, this closing brace bracket and now let's uh, go and execute this application and let's see what happens let's press f5 and let's execute slash spa slash index press enter so it will simply display the initial screen that is grid with add button let's press ctrl f5 once so that we make sure that there is no cache maintained now let's click on add new button screen is here let's put customer name let's put address and let me put age and finally let's click on save button but now when you click on save button nothing is happening look at this icon when i click on save button nothing is happening let's put a breakpoint in this save customer action method and now let's try to click on save button you'll see that this action method is getting executing that means button click is working properly the only thing is nothing is nothing is get refreshed now because it's ajax and in order to work ajax properly we need to define callback method callback method which will do something when ajax call completes or in short when this save customer call completes and in our case save success method is nothing but this on save success on save success function so this is this is going to be a simple javascript function so let's go and define it so for that we'll go to this index.chtml definitely first we stop this application and then just below this add customer javascript function we'll create one more javascript function and we'll name this javascript function as on save success which will take one argument r now this r will represent simply the return value of this save customer action method which is going to be json result so because it's json result so we should be able to we will be able to do something like this r dot customer name right so let's simply put alert and let's check that actually we are getting the expected output so let's press f5 once again let's click add new let's put value again mumbai 30 save and breakpoint is here let's press f5 and you will see nothing let's see what's the reason right click inspect element and here you will see 
a red symbol it means some javascript error is there now it says on save success is not defined so let's see why it happened let's go to our index.html again it's here oh spelling mistake okay so let's put it correctly now let's reload let's click on add new once again let's put the values again mumbai and 30 save see in the alert that means target 2 also achieved in target 1 we said when we click on the add new it will simply display a data entry screen here in target 2 we our target was when we click on the save save button we wanted to save this data in database and simply display something in alert in target 3 what we will do is whatever we add when we click on the save button we will display immediately in the grid and we'll simply remove this data entry screen from here so let's proceed so for that let's go back to visual studio again and in let's remove this alert from here and let's simply put an id here that is tpl data so that we can access this table and do some modification into it now we'll use dollar function of jquery and simply get access to the table so let me put where table is equal to dollar of my data and now we need to create three td right so let me say where customer or let's say name td equal to dollar td and dot text is going to be r dot customer name it will simply create a new td element and set it text as customer name let me create one more td where address td and let me take this code and paste it here but this time i'm going to use address and let me do it again and this time i'll say htd and here i'm going to replace it with h now next we will create tr so i'll say where tr is equal to dollar tr it will simply create a new tr and then we will say dot append this name td then append sorry not appy it should be append and simply append address td dot append htd now this feature of jquery where we can keep on calling this function is called as method chaining and now we have tr with us so we'll say table dot append tr so are we done no now next we have to do here is we have to remove that data entry screen from here so for that what we will do is we will simply say dollar due data entry dot html to blank okay so now let's execute or what we can do is we can simply refresh it let's refresh click on add new let's put a name here sukesh mumbai and age is going to be 30 click on save so it's here and data entry screen gone let's click on add new again let me put it again sukesh 2 mumbai 2 32 save it's here it's that simple and now it's time to implement cancel button that is our target number four now target four will be very easy we'll simply go to our data entry screen and attach on event handler on click event handler to this cancel button and simply invoke cancel save function when button is clicked and in the index.chtml we'll simply define this function as function cancel save and we'll simply copy this code and put it here now let's go back to our ui let's click on refresh let's click on add new let's put something here let's click on cancel add new again it's gone right cancel so cancel implementation done now it's time for target 5 that is this reset button when you put something inside this text box and when we click on this reset button all values should get cleared 
let's see what's hap or what is happening right now if i click on reset button you will see that it's already working right let's try again let's put something here let's click on reset it's it's working right and let's understand why now if you check our html you will find that this reset button is not a simple input type button it's a input type reset basically in html other than submit and button we have one more kind of button that is reset button it will simply clear all the uh, values of all the controls in the current form tag and this was the last part of our single page application sample but for video we have one more thing as i promised i am going to talk about jquery.ajax and mvc ajax now basically if you see here mvc ajax implementation is very very easy right simply we have to include couple of jquery files that is unobtrusive.ajax.js simply use ajax.begin form ajax options in a programmatic manner and we are done but if you'll check the jquery ajax code it's little bit complicated than mvc ajax this is example of get but if you are using post then probably we will be having some more parameter to this uh, function so the code will become somewhat complicated okay but again at the end of the day it comes to taste some people like using mvc ajax and some people like using jquery ajax now personally i prefer to use mvc ajax when i have a registration form kind of a stuff for example this example where i want that when i click the submit button all the values should be sent to the server so in that case when everything is straightforward i prefer to use mvc ajax because it's simple but if you are having something complicated or more customized or if you are expecting something in a more customized manner for example i'll put something in the customer name i'll pr i'll press tab okay and in the lost focus you want to do something in a server side you you don't want that all these values get sent to the server so if you want to get such kind of customization probably you should go with jquery ajax so as i said if everything is straightforward you are having too many of too many controls then go with mvc ajax but if you want complete control what need to be sent to the server go with jquery ajax thank you